Well, hello, it's time for my monthly update. And you may have noticed that my surroundings have changed a little bit, which I'll get to in just a moment. But first, hello there. This is Lily. Uh, this is not my dog. This is my brother's and sister-in-law's dog, uh, which is the location that I'm at right now. So I'm here because next month I'm going to be moving to Japan. So those of you that have followed me since my first introduction video will already know that that was uh, coming up, but I don't think very many people watched that video and it wasn't very good. <laughs> it was very awkward and boring, so I don't recommend going back and watching that, but uh, yeah, doggy. So uh, I'll talk more about uh, moving to Japan at the end of this video because I don't think that's what most people that are watching this channel are really interested in, and generally speaking, I don't plan to make this channel or any other channel that I ever make into a J-vlogging channel. That's not something I'm interested in doing. Uh, what I am interested in doing is maintaining this channel about Japanese language learning. Uh, but anyway, I'll talk a little bit more about Japan at the end of this video. So uh, I'm going to start with the stuff that is actually relevant for most of you, which is just language learning. So what is my progress? So uh, I'm definitely still making progress, but it's I feel like it's really hard to measure past a certain point. I definitely feel that I'm making progress. I am understanding more and more things in the media that I'm consuming, but putting a percentage on it feels a little weird to me at this point. And partly that's because uh, I don't know what counts as understanding, because a lot of the times I understand the rough gist of something, even though if I even though I don't necessarily understand all of. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, even though I don't understand the exact uh, phrasing of everything, uh, and sometimes I think like I kind of sort of understand, but I'm not really entirely sure. And does that count? If kind of later I check and discover that they did understand it correctly, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so what I'd like to do from this point forward is more talk about uh, kind of my subjective experiences of understanding Japanese, because I feel like that is at least as accurate as percentages that I just pull out of my ass, uh, and is probably a lot more interesting. So the big new experience that I had recently uh, was I was watching a show and understood everything and forgot that I was watching in Japanese. Uh, and when I say understand everything, I don't mean the whole episode, I mean for like some like short scene that had relatively simple Japanese, I understood the whole thing and just completely forgot that I was watching in Japanese, and it wasn't until the next scene when <laughs> there was something that I didn't understand that I was like, oh, wait, I'm watching this in Japanese. Whoa, that was really cool. Uh, so that was that was really exciting to have that experience, because there's definitely been uh, times where I've understood whole scenes in simple, simple Japanese before, but I'm very aware that it's in Japanese. Uh, so that was really fun. That was really cool. So I feel like that's sort of a... a milestone of sorts. Um, but yeah, so that was really cool. And that's really all I have as far as kind of updates on progress goes. I'm continuing to work uh, through various decks that I have. Uh, but uh, but I don't feel like, again, those statistics aren't really that interesting. I'm just continuing to learn new words, new grammar points as I go through. Uh, but I do have some updates on uh, kind of the approaches that I'm taking. So uh, Oh, where to start? So I am continuing to do the core 2000s Japanese deck, as well as continuing to work through a dictionary of basic Japanese grammar uh, by adding flashcards to another deck. Uh, the latter, uh, the dictionary of basic Japanese grammar, I am over two thirds done with. And when I finish that one, then I expect I will start adding flashcards from the content that I'm watching. But until then, I mean, I'm, I'm adding like a few cards here and there, but for the most part, not. I want to work through this this book first. So for core, the Core 2000 deck, I had mentioned in my last video that I want to focus on listening comprehension rather than reading. Uh, having said that, I do want to keep refreshing myself on kanji as well as build up my ability to read kind of slowly, right? So what I've taken to doing is with the Core 2000 deck, I am I have vocabulary reading cards. 
and sentence listening comprehension cards. And this has actually turned out to work pretty well, and I don't necessarily know if I would recommend it for other people, but I certainly wouldn't not recommend it. The thing that's kind of fun about it is that the vocabulary cards are shown the day before the sentence cards that use that vocabulary. And so I'm priming myself with the vocabulary, and there is a listening component to the vocabulary as well, because there's just the, the vocab that's read off. I, I have to read it first and then I like press a thing to make it play the audio and I'm like, oh, did I get the pronunciation correct? Um, but it's kind of neat because it preps me for the sentence in a, in a sense, and so by the time that I've kind of memorized the word, it immediately gives me a chance to actually use it in context, and I think that's actually kind of fun. I've been enjoying that. Um, for the Dictionary of Basic Grammar cards, on the other hand, uh, so one of the commenters, and I really sorry if I forget your name, super cool channel, way better channel than mine, it's embarrassing that I, I should have written that down in my notes, uh, super, super cool guy, uh, anyway, sorry, I'll, I'll put a link in, in, the, in the description, his channel is amazing, way better than mine, uh, but, uh, he had, had noted that, uh, you can use text-to-speech to create audio for, uh, for sentence cards that you don't already have audio for, and it's not as good as native, like, actual spoken audio, but it still is better than nothing, and it gives you a chance to at least try and, and listen and, and understand it. So I've been doing that. There's a site called ttsmp3.com that utilizes Amazon's text-to-speech technology, and you can you know, just type things in. It has two different Japanese voices, which is actually kind of useful for uh, dialogue-ish exchanges, uh, and yeah, it seems to work pretty well. It's, you know, it's speech, there's text to speech, so it's not great, but it's decent. Um, so I've been including audio and uh, creating listening comprehension cards out of that for the grammar points as well. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so I'd mentioned that I, I was occasionally doing some sense card, sentence cards from the media that I'm consuming at this point. Uh, mostly focusing on the other things, but starting to add some things. And one of the really popular tools for doing that is Substest RS. And this is really, uh, seems to be fairly a fairly well-known tool uh, throughout the community. The thing <laughs> that's unfortunate about it for me is that it's, at least as far as I can tell, it's Windows only. Uh, and I'm a bit of a nerdy guy. I run Linux, have for really, really long time. Uh, outside of work, I don't think I've ever had Linux on my computer for like the last decade. Or sorry, I don't think I've ever had Windows on my computer for the last decade. Um, it's always been Linux. Um, anyway, so that kind of limits the tools that, that are accessible to me. But on the other hand, I'm a nerd. <laughs> and uh, I do some software development, among other things. And so I decided, well, I'll just kind of write my own tool. So I did, and I'll link to that uh, below. It is not as nice as Subst SRS in terms of uh, being easy to use, but I'm also targeting it more at people like me that run Linux or are comfortable with the command line, uh, because if you're running Windows, you already have Subst SRS, so you're kind of good to go. Uh, and uh, I also decided to do things a little bit differently than Subst SRS in terms of what it generates. So Subst SRS, uh, my understanding, at least since I haven't been able to use it myself, uh, is that it generates entire Anki decks for you, and that wasn't really how I wanted to do things. I prefer, I mean, maybe I'll change my mind about this later, I'm all, all for trying new things, but the way that I've, I've been liking to do things more is to be watching a show to not quite understand something, but be like, I feel like I almost understood that, and then kind of go back and listen to it a few times, turn on subtitles, see if I can understand it that way, and then if it's just like if one or two things, you know, that I don't understand in the sentence, then make a sentence card out of that, like, at that moment. So having an entire deck auto-generate isn't really the way that I want to do things. I want to be able to create a card as I go. So what this tool that I've made does is it's uh, well, it takes a subtitles file and a uh, video file, and it will create a directory with just a whole ton of uh, text files and MP3 files, and it'll have, a, basically, they're paired. So you have 
a text file with the subtitle and an mp3 file with the audio that corresponds to that subtitle out of the uh, out of the, the video and they're all time stamped in in their file names so when i'm watching something it's really easy to scroll through find the one that i want uh, and then quickly create a card out of it so uh yeah i'm super open to contributions i don't know how many people i mean very few people watch my channel i know because it's my channel and i look at the statistics it's mostly for this channel is mostly for me anyway but uh but uh, anyway, anyone who wants to contribute to it, uh, I'd love to collaborate. Um, it's super, super basic right now um, and can definitely be improved. Uh, and I would not be at all opposed to adding a feature to generate an entire Anki deck uh, out of it either. Um, yeah, so I mean, it'd be really great to, to improve this over time. Uh, anyway, but yeah, link to that below for those of you who want to use that if you're in a similar situation as me. Uh, it's just a bit of info, it's a, it's a Python script, so you'll need to have Python installed. And then it also calls FFmpeg to do the audio extraction, so you'll need to have FFmpeg installed on your system. Uh, but there's no dependencies other than that. Uh, yeah, so, whew. Okay, so let's see, last thing. Yeah, so the last thing is, uh, up to this point, I've pretty much just been, you know, watching shows, and then when I finish it, when I finish a show, move on to another show. And I am thinking that this is not the most efficient way to learn Japanese. I think utilizing the same material over and over again is probably helpful. So what I've decided to start doing is uh, not 100% doing this, but to select like one or two shows that will be sort of like my workhorse shows, so to speak. And trying to watch those repeatedly and try to understand more of them over time and try to like grow my understanding of that show and create sentence cards from that show so I can like really up my understanding of that. Uh, and this, it's, I, I feel like this is how a lot of people have gone about it in the past, but I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Uh, but something I'm going to try and kind of see how it goes. Uh, yeah. So I think that's about it. Oh, except one other thing. So because I'm moving to Japan, uh, and since I, so I came down to uh, stay with my brother and sister-in-law because I'm going to be going to Japan. Uh, so I moved from Seattle down here to stay with them for like a month or so, uh, specifically so that I can spend some time with my family, because I'm probably not going to see a lot of them for a while, because uh, I expect to be over in Japan for a while. Uh, but also because of that, when I was still up in Seattle, uh, my schedule was super packed, uh, because I was trying to see a lot of people that I wasn't going to see for a long time. So last month, uh, in January, I, you know, there was a, how do I put this? I didn't fall off the wagon. I definitely kept up my reviews. I was not always adding new cards. Uh, and with the exception of like a handful of days, I was always getting some active immersion time in, uh, but it was a lot less than uh, it has been previously. And the thing that's kind of interesting to me about that is observing that I was still improving even with like relatively uh, relatively little active immersion. Uh, so I'd watch like maybe one episode of something a night, right? Uh, like a 20 to 30 minute thing. Uh, and that's really, really little. And uh, I, I, I'm not absolutely not saying that <laughs> Uh, that is that you can do that and like make rapid progress but I think it's kind of interesting that like taking kind of some light breaks where that's kind of the case probably isn't awful um, as long as you don't completely stop uh, I don't really have any deep thoughts about that but I just kind of thought that was interesting um, okay so finally uh, so now that I'm kind of so that's all the stuff that I thought might actually be interesting to people uh, so now on to my Japan plans. So those of you who are just interested in the language learning stuff, you can stop. Uh, there's not going to be anything more about that in this video. Um, okay, so 
yeah, so I'm moving to Japan. It's not a permanent thing. Uh, I'm going to be working as an ALT, or assistant language teacher, in southern Tohoku uh, with a very well-known large dispatch company over there. I'll be working in the Japanese public school system, uh, and I expect I'm going to be over there for like two to three years doing this. So this might seem kind of strange given my age, like I'm in my mid-30s, I have a pretty successful career that I'm taking this uh, break from to do this. Uh, but I've always been kind of weird. I'm a weird guy. Uh, it's not a career change, it's like a sort of a life adventure while I'm still sort of kind of young-ish. Because <laughs> um, I feel like if I'm gonna do this, if I'm gonna have this experience, uh, sooner rather than later, and I'm not getting any younger. So uh, I realized that moving to Japan, I, and this is an important point, uh, I don't think this is necessarily going to improve me learning Japanese, right? Because if I took that same time and just kind of lift off of my savings for a while, for like a year or something, I, you know, and just full-time study Japanese, I could probably make more progress uh, than actually living in Japan, which sounds weird, uh, but Matt, both Matt versus Japan and... Um, uh, Steve Kaufman have talked about this before, where living in the country is not necessary for lear for learning a language, and in some ways, you know, at, at least depending on your personality, it might not uh, actually be even the most efficient way to do it, because uh, you can get a lot of listening inputs, uh, which is the key, uh, without ever going there. Uh, so anyway, so I, I realize this isn't like the recommended uh, like uh, mass immersion approach or AJAT. Uh, method thing to do and I don't really care uh, <laughs> that's kind of what it comes down to because my goals are a little bit different so I feel like a lot of people that are jumping into MIA, MIA and AJAT and that kind of stuff like the reasons for for learning Japanese I don't honestly always know what what they are um, but for me a lot of it is that I've only been monolingual up to this point, and uh, I lived in Europe for quite some time, uh, and like almost everyone over there is at least bilingual, if not more. Uh, and I feel like you know I'm missing out on something not not knowing another language. But so for me, it's more of an experiential thing, right? Like I'm not learning it for necessarily a practical purpose. Uh, it's more because I think it it's interesting, and because the reason I'm doing it is because I think it would be interesting. That also means that I don't necessarily need to go about it in the most efficient way. I actually want to go about it in the most interesting way, right? Um, I'm okay if I'm not as efficient learning language. I'm okay if I pick up some bad speaking habits because I output too early that I might have you know, difficulty fixing later. I'm okay with these things because what I want out of this is kind of the experience of it, right? If that makes sense. And I think it'll be a lot more interesting to learn a language in the country. So uh, a good example of this is that, okay, so I work, I'm not gonna name names, but I worked for quite a few years for a very well-known Japanese games company, uh, but the American branch of it. And um, because of that, I went uh, for business trips over in Japan. And uh, one of the times that I did that, I went uh, to I just kind of stayed for an extra week after the business trip and just wandered around Japan kind of aimlessly. <laughs> Again, I'm a little bit of a weird person. Um, didn't really have any plans. Just like, ah, oh, okay, leaving the hotel. <laughs> Don't know where I'm gonna sleep tonight. Uh, but it was great, and I had a fantastic time. I knew like a tiny little bit of Japanese, uh, and I actually really enjoyed the experience of like having to struggle a little bit to communicate with people, which sounds weird, but I think there's, there's, that's actually a really worthwhile experience to have. And this is in contrast, for example, to the experience that I had in Europe, where pretty much everyone speaks English, right? It's super easy. I mean, it depends on the part of Europe, but like, certainly the parts that I was in, like, everyone speaks English. It's really easy to get by over there and communicate with people, and there's not really, really a lot of barriers. Uh, and that's great, like, that's a, that was a fantastic experience, I loved that part of my life. Uh, but what I'm looking for from this is actually something, I'm looking for challenges, right? I'm looking to have to struggle a bit. Um, so I want that experience, I actually want to go to Japan not knowing a whole lot of Japanese, right? Not being fluent in Japanese, and having that struggle. 
which might <laughs> might sound kind of weird. Um, but I think there's ways that you can like connect with other people that that kind of go beyond just language. And I made like I made a friend over there that I'm still in touch with, and we had a hell of a time like trying to talk to each other. But we still had a great time together and spent like a whole day together. And um, I don't know. I just I think there's there's something there that I want. And it's I guess a little hard to put into words, but there's something there that that I'm looking for. Um, so that's an example of kind of what I'm looking for out of this experience. And so I'm okay with not learning Japanese the most efficient possible way, uh, because that's not the only thing that I want to get out of it, right? And so, uh, and I guess for other people that are trying to learn Japanese, I would encourage you to think about why you're learning Japanese. And I don't mean like, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be like some, like, deep in, in your heart reason, but like, I mean, just kind of think about like, why are you learning Japanese? And uh, what do you want out of, out of that experience? Right? Um, what are you actually looking to get out of it? And maybe, like me, doing something a little crazy to get something, to get a more interesting experience, even if it isn't as efficient, uh, might be worthwhile for you. Uh, but uh, I guess since I'm going to be moving over there and going to be over there and I'm going to keep up this channel while I'm over here, I guess we'll see how I feel about it after like a year or so. Uh, I expect there's going to be some hard times, uh, but uh, I think it'd be really naive to go over there thinking it's going to be sunshine, sunshine and rainbows. I suspect there's going to be some difficult things I'm going to face over there. Um, just because the culture is very different, and especially when I do have those communication barriers at first. Uh, but uh, but nevertheless, I think it's going to be worthwhile, but we'll, we'll find out how I feel about it how I feel about it later. Um, yeah, anyway, so... Actually, I guess the other thing... One other thing that I could... So I'm really interested in, like, different Japanese dialects, and as far as I can tell, all of the information and kind of resources online for learning Japanese target, like, the... what's, I guess, usually referred to as the standard Tokyo dialect of Japanese. And since most media in Japan, again, this is my understanding, uh, since I don't understand Japanese super well yet, uh, I may be mistaken about this, but my impression is like most media produced from Japan is also in that standard Tokyo dialect. Uh, it can be really hard to, to learn anything else over here. And again, kind of in the spirit of like, I'm doing this because I think it's, it's interesting, like it's not just to be useful. I'm kind of looking forward to really embracing the dialect where wherever I end up being placed, uh, kind of in southern Tohoku, uh, because the dialects are different, right? There's things that are different about them, um, to the point that, as I understand, at least in northern Tohoku, like often people from there are subtitled in Japan because other parts of Japan have that much difficulty understanding what they're saying. Um, and I find that really fascinating. Like, I think that's really interesting and that's something that I want to explore as well. And I think that's something that's really hard to do over here in the US. Um, so uh, I don't know what that is actually gonna do to my Japanese. Like in my, attempt to, in my attempt to embrace the dialect where I'm at, I might end up with some really weird like combination of uh, like Tokyo Japanese, Southern Tohoku Japanese and just crappy uh, American trying to learn Japanese Japanese, uh, but I'm pretty okay with that, and I think these are all things that, like, I can, to some extent, address later. Uh, but again, if you go back and watch my first introdu introductory video, I'm not, uh, I'm not actually trying to achieve a native-like accent or anything like that, so my goals are a little bit different than I think some people's are, which I guess this whole later part of this video makes pretty clear. I'm my goals are, are different than I think a lot of people's are. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Uh, so my, interestingly, what this means is my next update is going to be after I'm in Japan. Uh, so this is the only video you're gonna see this background in. Uh, the next one will be my Japanese apartment, wherever that is. What that means, however, is that I don't know exactly when my next update is, is gonna be. It might be a little bit late because I think there's gonna be some, uh, I'm gonna to have to take some time to settle. Uh, there's gonna be plenty of things I'm probably gonna to have to take care of over there, which might not leave a lot of time and or energy to do my next updates. 
but uh, but I will I will do it. Uh, but it just might be a little bit late the next one. But it will be from Japan, which should be fun. Uh, but again, uh, this channel is not about my Japanese experiences. Maybe it sounds a little bit selfish. I don't know. Like, I, I want those experiences to be mine, right? So I probably will talk about them if they're relevant, uh, only insofar as they're relevant to my Japanese language learning. But in general, this is not going to be a, a, a JVlog channel. This is not going to be about my experiences in Japan, uh, except as they're relevant to me learning Japanese. So I think that's uh, just about it. And yeah.